Marimo has some amazing utilities when it comes to data frames, and in this video, I'm gonna highlight a few that come right out of the box. Now, if you're used to notebook environments, then you're probably used to seeing data frames look a little bit like this. In this particular case, I am using polars, and the standard view is not bad. You can go over the rows and you do get a nice little HTML table that renders. But if you were to view the same data frame inside of Marimo, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of utilities that you get added on top of this. But if you were to display the data frame as you would normally in Marimo, then you're gonna notice that there's a lot of functionality built on top. Now, in this particular case, I'm using the Marimo plane function over here to show what a plane render might look like. But let's have a look at what it looks like when I just show the default instead. This is what it looks like in Marimo by default. Note, by the way, that this is a data set all about Pokemon, so we've got a name. We've also got some uh, Pokemon types, as well as some integer values like hit points, attack points, defense points. And if you have lots of columns, you can also scroll to the right, you can scroll back to the left. And for all the numeric values, you're going to notice that we automatically display this histogram over here that helps give you a little bit of an impression of the distribution of the underlying data. Another thing that you'll notice is that at the bottom here, you can go through the different pages. This is nice because it respects the screen real estate, but at the same time, it also allows you to actually see all of the data that is in this data frame. So, so far so good, but everything I've just explained to you is just showing the data frame. You can actually interact with this right from the start as well. So let's say, just for example, I am kind of interested in a Pokemon type, then I can go to the column name over here and besides sorting, one thing I could also do is I could say, well, I want to filter. So, I don't know, let's say that we're interested in having all the water Pokemons just to give a example. All right, so that's kind of interesting. And uh, let's maybe also sort by the hit points. And we see that Magikarp is maybe one of the weaker water Pokemon. And if memory serves, that also feels just about right. Notice, by the way, that if you're applying a filter, that you do see the filter appear on top over here. And one thing you can do is you can just choose to remove it. I can also go back to this original column over here and just clear the sorting. And then I'm back to uh, what I started with. One of my favorite quick hand tools in this widget, by the way, is at the bottom over here. You're gonna see that there's this magnifying glass. And when I hit that, I'm able to search through this entire data frame. And in this particular case, let's say I'm interested in a very particular Pokemon. So maybe Charmander or something. So something that starts with Char. And lo and behold, a quick search yields a quick result down below over here. And especially if you're dealing with larger data sets, being able to just filter very quickly like this without having to open up a new cell and then go deeper, uh, that is definitely also a very nice feature. On top of all of this, there is also a export utility that's built in natively. On the right hand side over here, you're gonna notice there's a download tab, and this will allow you to download any subset that you've currently got selected. And there's a few options too. So you can choose to download this as a CSV file, but you can also choose to download this as JSON. Depending on the use case, either might be more useful. So this is pretty nice, but what if you wanted to go maybe a step further? It could be the case that you're interested in making a selection here and that you would then like to use that selection for some other pipeline or some other visual in another cell, let's say. Put differently, can we maybe change this data frame to be a little bit more like an input element as opposed to just an output element? And for that, there's also utilities inside of Marimo. I am using the same data frame as before, but I am wrapping it with a Marimo UI table function. And quite honestly, it's pretty much the same view as we saw before. It's just that there are these selection boxes in front of every single row over here. Now, what that allows me to do is I could perform the same search as I did before. So I could look for Charmander, let's say. And then I could say, well, these are maybe the Pokemon that I'm interested in. So I could make a selection. I could maybe select this guy, this one, and this one. You'll notice that as I do this, something in the cell below updates. I can make a selection, and the selection that I've made actually appears down below. And that is because this table variable over here keeps track of everything that I've selected, and it puts that in its value property. And notice that this will update reactively. Whenever there's a change in this user interface element, this variable and then also this cell will update as a response. So I don't know, one thing I could do is I could maybe uh, make a selection over here. Let's say uh, I'm interested in the attack value and maybe the defense value, something like that. And maybe let's calculate the mean just to give a example. And one thing I could now very quickly do is I could maybe undo this search undo this selection, and instead maybe just select all the water Pokemon, the thing I did before. So I'm just gonna apply a little filter here, 
water. And I can now go ahead and select all the water Pokemon real quick by hitting the upper right hand box tick. And lo and behold, this is a very convenient way for me to make quick summaries, make quick selections. And the sky is also kind of the limit here because the data frame updates and you can use whatever widgets inside of a remote to also update as a result. Now, it could also be the case that the end user of your notebook is maybe not so much a programmer, but maybe more of a business archetype. And this can be especially true if you're running your notebook in app mode. In that case, the end user might not be as technical and wouldn't be able to write Polar's code, but might still want to be able to make some aggregations and data transformations. And for that use case, you can also use the Marimo UI data frame wrapper that you can put your data frame in. And what you're able to do here is you're able to click together transformations without having to write any code yourself. So in this particular case, one thing I guess I could do is let's maybe select a few columns. And let's say that in this case, I'm interested in uh, the Pokemon type, maybe the hit points, the attack points, and the defense points might be a good start. And let's do a quick aggregation. So let's do a group by, and let's say that I'm interested in grouping over the Pokemon type. And let's keep things simple. Let's just say that I'm interested in calculating the mean. And when I do this, you can see that I've got this neat little summary over here over all of these different Pokemon types. And you know, in this particular case, it's Pokemon, but in a more real life scenario, you can definitely imagine that you might be able to mix and match things here with a proper business outcome as well. And not requiring the end user to write code themselves is definitely a nice thing. That said, one thing that is particularly nice about this widget is that as you're clicking together data transformations, you can actually also generate the Python code. When you go to this tab, you're gonna see the Python code that you could use to run this yourself. And you can also quickly hit this copy code button to copy this in a separate cell for reuse if that's something you're interested in. Now there's one final utility that I wanna mention that is mostly related to visualizations. And it's similar in spirit to what I showed earlier. The idea here is that you can click together a visual that you're interested in. And the utility that I'm talking about is the mo.ui.dataexplorer function. You can pass it your data frame and then you should see a user interface that looks a little bit like this. When it's generated, it comes out of the box with a couple of charts that do its best to make aggregations. And these are pretty useful, but let's maybe click one together just from the start. So in this particular case, uh, let's say I'm interested in having attack on the X axis, uh, defense on the Y axis, and let's then maybe also change the color uh, to depend on the Pokemon type. Notice by the way, that whenever you make a chart, the widget will automatically make some extra charts down below. So for example, right here, it's made the same chart, but it's made a split based on whether or not it is a legendary Pokemon or not. This was a separate column. So you can see that it's able to split that chart up. There's a similar thing happening with this chart over here. It's effectively the same grid creation. It's just that right now it's gonna happen on the secondary Pokemon type. A lot of these charts will therefore also be very sparsely populated. But again, the main point is that if you're just exploring and perhaps especially if Altair is somewhat new to you, then this widget can also definitely help you get started quickly. Not to mention the fact that this is also something that some of your business users probably will like very much. So there you have it. If you're using Marimo, then you can go way further than data frame representations that look like this. You are really able to mix and match interactive elements together. And in general, especially when you're getting started with a data set for the first time, the utilities that you get out of the box just help you understand the data set a whole lot quicker. Note that in this video, I'm also just really scratching the surface because again, you can really mix and match all the user interface components together to make proper apps that are really bespoke to the data set that you've got. So yeah, if you haven't already, I really do hope that you're gonna give this a spin because exploring data sets really is a lot more fun when you have better tools at your disposal.